Thank you guys and welcome to Up Speed Show on Buzz Central. I know it is night time on your time zone, but anyway, you made time for us. So we what? Sure did. <laughs> welcome to the show, Benjamin and Akini. Thank you for having us. Karibu, karibu, karibu. You guys met on a dating app. What attracted you to each other? <laughs> he, has a, he, he smiles all the time. So his smile was the first thing that I saw that attracted me to him. And she just liked my photo. So I was like, there's no way that, uh, you know, this beautiful, beautiful person would be interested in me. So, uh, but I think Akini said that it was a picture of me with two of my coworkers. That was the, uh, the thing yeah, that, that made made her uh click like so he had a picture on the dating app where he was like holding him and some <laughs> other he was in the middle of two girls so i was like oh do i really want to like this guy <laughs> so, so the picture seemed like a player yeah the picture i was like i don't know why he has put this picture in here in his head he's just thinking these are my co-workers but wait, <laughs> i think what people were seeing was hmm he's like a player player Mm. What are what are some of the dating challenges you guys had while dating on the app? Like during the long distance relationship, what would you say? I think that definitely the time zones were a challenge because I would I would want to get up early, um, and she'd have to stay up late to try and make time that we were able to communicate and. Um, one of the things that I originally was hesitant about was she had asked me to text her and, and get off of the app. And I was just like, eh, I've seen these scams where, where people, you know, ask you to text and then, you know, it, you end up losing everything. So it was one of those things I was hesitant, but I missed talking to her for, for a couple of days. So I was like, okay, let me text her. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say the same thing. It's the, the time difference plays a big factor. And then the fact that you can't go on a date physically together, you you know, it's everything is on the phone. Even if you like one time we had tried to watch a movie, <laughs> like to have a movie night, a virtual movie night. Mm -hmm. And it was so mm -hmm. difficult because I couldn't set it up right. And we couldn't have the same screen. So it was it, it, it was difficult. Uh-huh. So at what point did you guys decide to let, let's do a video call to just no, you, you're truly Benjamin, I'm seeing, and, and you're a kid. So we started with texting first, mm -hmm. and then he sent me a picture of himself. I sent him my pictures just so that we both know we are talking to each other, like we are real people. And mm -hmm. then we started slowly with voice, voice notes. So I sent him a voice note telling him, this is me, this is my voice. And then he sent me a voice note then we did the voice notes for a while. Then we started doing the voice calls. Then we ended up video calling. So it was like a, like a yeah, gradual yeah, process. Yes. Audio, then now video. Yes. Wow. But I think within like two months of, of dating, we, we were on video calls. Yeah. But you see, it was a long two months of just talking on text and voice calls and, and voice notes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Qu quite a good trajectory of getting to yeah. know someone before seeing someone. I was being careful because <laughs> I needed to know. If it was truly Benjamin. Yeah, yeah. what I was getting myself into, I, I didn't know what kind of person he is. So I wanted to know if he would take it as slow as I am taking it, but he did, so. So how long did it take before you guys, before Benjamin decided to come to Kenya and actually meet their Kenya on the video call? Uh, it was six to seven months. No. Wait, that's when we made that you made the decision that you wanted to visit. So that's when we started having the conversation that he's coming in the sixth or seventh month. And then it was about the eighth or ninth month that I actually uh, traveled to uh, Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So I uh, almost a year. Yeah. Uh huh. You guys appeared in the season three of 90 Day Fiance before 90 Days. 
uh, how did you get in the show? Is it something you apply? Do they call you and say, we want you guys on the show? So I, I really, I sent, uh, sent an email and I said, hey, I'm, I'm going to, uh, to meet this girl that I've been talking to. Um, and uh, I think that, you know, she's, she's my love and my match. And do you guys want to come along? You know, come, come with me. And uh, sure enough, they, uh, they showed up yeah, and uh, came with me. <laughs> nice. So was there a contractual agreement? Or is this them coming, coming with you to Africa? So it's a TV. So you have to sign lots and lots of contracts. There are things we, like even, there are things maybe you will ask us about the show we cannot talk about because we signed a contract. Uh, we can talk about some bits. We cannot talk about every little thing. So the contract was both sides. Yeah. Him and you. And both of you had to agree to do this. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, paying dowry has its challenges. Whether you're an African or a white man paying for your African babe, there's always challenges. Was there a moment where Benjamin, you said, ah, I'm done with this. I don't think this, like a moment you wanted to give up or that never crossed your mind. So I never wanted to give up, but when um, everything came up, it was one of those things that I really, I spoke to Akini about it and it was one of those things that, okay, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable, but at the same time, I think this is something that I'm not used to. And so. By being uncomfortable, he means for him, he had thought uh, it's a sale because in America, they don't have that culture. So he was telling me, I don't want you to feel like an object that I am. I'm, I am I'm not buying goods. Yeah, yeah, I'm not buying goods. And, and she's priceless. I mean, how how can you have a, a number to somebody so wonderful and Aww. beautiful and supportive? I, I mean, I, I was I was like, I, I can't even. I don't. Let, let me go call Bill Gates and everybody else who's <laughs> rich and millionaires and billionaires. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you never wanted to give up in short. No, no. Didn't. Have, you, have, have you guys watched the show and what was one of the omg moments where you watched other couples and you're like i think we are way better and and way chilled who gave you the omg moment among other people on the show i mean specifically from the season that we were on yes. um you know we sat there and and caesar just is forking out oh, wow. thousands yes. and thousands of dollars <laughs> for a girl that he's never video chatted in, or in life yeah. or spoken to uh, in, in real life. And I think it was like four or five failed attempts to, to travel to meet her. And I, I mean, I just sat there and I was like, wow, come on, and wake they up. Never, they never met, right? <laughs> no. Yeah. The, they never he went, went to travel, the yeah he traveled to that country mexico, but they never i think he traveled to mexico and then he ended up going to mexico yeah mm -hmm. oh, no, okay because <laughs> <laughs> we watch we watch the show and we we are always thinking like wow he did that oh my god he exactly can't think, he, he can't think like this is a scam he's being catfished or if it's not catfished this girl it's just here for the money, but you guys, I, we, were, we were thinking I think the, the whole idea, the really? whole idea of sorry, sorry for cutting you short. The whole idea of, of like someone traveling to another country is that you're just very hopeful that it's going to work out. That this is the person I'm going to spend the rest of my life with, because even me, as I choose for him to come and see me, it's it's literally a sacrifice I'm making. Because I don't know what kind of person he is in person. I've not spent six months with him in person. I don't know his good habits, his bad habits, and all of that. But it's just you're hopeful. So I feel like every person who you see on the show is a hopeful person who is like, 
I hope this is what works for me. I hope this person that I get to meet is going to be the love of my life, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Akinyi, going, getting a visa for US is, is quite a hard task and it's also challenging. How was it? How was that experience for you getting one? It was, it was long. Uh, it was, it was hectic. And then ours was around this time where COVID had started. Mm -hmm. So we were about to get it. Then COVID hit. Then we had to wait for the whole year to end. Then the, mm -hmm. when we were about to get it also again, mm -hmm. that's when they couldn't find my papers, first of all. Like they were trying to find it in the system. They could not find it. So I had to wake him up. I don't know how many times. <laughs> how many times did I have to wake you up? <laughs> I just didn't sleep that night. Yeah, he wasn't, he, he wasn't, and he's a deep sleeper. So for you to even pick up my phone, kudos. <laughs> it was very difficult. Uh, so I he had to reapply some things. Um, that process, honestly, is a very long, tedious process. Now you got the visa, you get to the US, what was the most shocking thing what what was, <laughs> after getting to the us what shocked you the most the, 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 so this the, this this will always be like our story <laughs> so i landed in new york and then i had four four suitcases that i was pulling and then one that i had and two that i had carried on the on the plane so i was pulling all these suitcases you know, when Ukibruta Vituna scale, like you're tired. Yeah, and you're the sweaty. Minute. Yes, and you're sweaty. So me, I'm sweaty and I'm tired. And I'm, and Benjamin comes with a big jacket, like, Akini, take this jacket, you're going to need it. And I'm like, I just pulled these four suitcases. I don't think I'm going to need them. I'm too hot. Then he's like, Are you sure? And I'm like, Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> so he helps me with my suitcases. And then we walk outside. I'm telling you, I was slapped with cold. Yani baridi nyelini pinga everywhere. Like it is everywhere. Like all at once in just a split of a second. I felt like, oh wow, you're freezing. You, yes, I was freezing. That is the like. It is worse than the fridge. It's literally because it comes with the wind. That was the that was the most shocking thing because I had never experienced win, uh, winter. Yeah. yeah, I had never experienced winter. That was the most shocking thing for me. Uh -huh. Th those are those are time which I watched the show uh, via YouTube, via TLC channel on YouTube. And you were in hospital. What really happened? Um, well, you want to take it? I, I can. <laughs> so I, I, on our way across country, Akini tried almost every fast food <laughs> well, i was trying everything <laughs> and so so i mean we had everything from kfc mcdonald's burger king um and once we got back here to arizona um i think that that food just hit her so you know um, how you how you travel and so for me when i travel to a new place my body kind of tries to readjust so for that whole time we were driving to Arizona, I did not go number two. <laughs> I was just going number one. <laughs> so, so things were just that. piling up. Yeah, I mean, it was piling up the KFC, the McDonald's, <laughs> the, the what else? There's so many, so many fast foods here. But I was trying, I was sampling everything so that I see which one is good. You know, they show it on TV. So you're like wondering how does this taste like? I was tasting everything. Uh-huh. So that, that is why, you, how long were you in the hospital? Uh, we went the first time and then we went again the second time. Mm -hmm. So after how long did you get to meet Benjamin's son? And uh, what do you, do you guys have a relationship with him? What's your bond like, you and his son? Um, I met him. It took a while for, for me to meet him because even when I came, the, the country was still on lockdown. And uh, we, we had to do some quarantining as well yeah. once we returned to Arizona. So it took it took me a while, like you would say, until we, and after our wedding. 
was it? Yeah. No, you met him before the wedding. Really? Uh, it, it was about a month in uh, to, to Akini being in the States. Yeah. So it was, not, it was like two months. A month and a half? Yeah. So. And we have a good relationship. I mean, that's something I was worried about because I didn't know, you know, I would like to think I'm good with kids, but um, a, a kid from a different culture, you know, I have an accent. So I was wondering, is my accent going to be something he understands? Um, just all those things that I was putting into. And then I was giving myself, mm-hmm. you know, that <laughs> you, you it's like a perfect mom. <laughs> yeah. But, um, we're we're doing good wouldn't you agree i would agree yeah you've just talked about the wedding how was it was it a big one was it an intimate one with only close family and friends it was very intimate um we you know didn't want to do a very large event with covid um but uh it was it was very intimate um and thankfully we were able to uh, at least virtually have Akini's family join us. Yeah, he, he, he did a big surprise for me. I didn't know. So my, I was supposed to be given away by a pastor that we knew. So my dad, because my dad wasn't there to give me away. Um, and Benjamin did a whole huge surprise right now. My dad appeared on, the, my dad and my mom, they both appeared on the screen. And then when the pastor was asking who is giving this girl for her hand in marriage, then my parents appeared. And so I started crying. <laughs> I cried like a baby. I was like, oh, wow, that, that, that was the best wedding surprise. Oh, that's so, yeah. so sweet and nice. <laughs> that was the best. So when they appeared, they, my dad said that he's giving my hand in marriage. And I cried throughout the whole service. We cried giving our vows. We are both criers. And I got to dance. <laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, you, you guys love matching your clothes. I can see now you're both having, <laughs> it has a touch of orange and then you, you have an orange. Benjamin uh, always is like this. When, when, when I wear something, he likes to compliment it. Nice. So this is his compliment for what I am wearing. Is the touch of the orange in the t-shirt. Yeah. But you also have uh, Kitenge outfits. These are African fa- outfits. And in Kenya, wearing paired Kitenge outfits means your couple goes. Then you've reached to a state where <laughs> guys can look up to your relationship and say, wow, these this guys have made it. Did you make those clothes in Kenya or in the US, the African fabric ones? Um, he actually came and we took his measurements in Kenya. So all his clothes were made in Kenya. All the things that we wear, like that we look alike in, that are Kitenge, they were made in Kenya. Ah, you guys have a YouTube channel and we love yeah. to watch your, your many, many topics there that you feature. Why did you start it? And what's the goal for the channel? Um, do you want to take this one? Yeah. So, um, a lot of times we get messages from people who just want to know updates on what is happening in life and what we are doing. Um, and so we figured the YouTube channel would be a venue to go ahead and communicate, uh, what is happening in life, um, and what we are, we are doing. Um, also Akini's always been into, uh, the makeup and uh, photography side of of things, and I like to travel, so we're hoping to share those experiences and tips with you know our viewers. Uh, Akini, though, there was a time you were answering a Q and A session on Instagram, and someone asked you if if you if you have ever been with a woman, and you said yes. And people didn't understand. Was it sexually being in a with the oh, woman? No. Was it a friendship? 
explain expound more about that because most no, people I have, no, I have not been sexually with a woman but you know how they say how the song goes i kissed a girl and i liked it and so i you know you go through a phase where you're like do i want to know if i'm straight or not so i went through that phase of i mean i want to just be sure that i'm straight so i kissed a girl and i was like yeah i'm straight this didn't do I, anything I like dudes. <laughs> yeah <laughs> So that, that's what it meant. Uh, what would you guys advise couples who are on apps looking for love or they already found someone? What, what would you give them as advice and steps to take to, to be in a mature and uh, not being ripped off like most relationships we see on the, on the show you guys were featured on? I mean, I think I would say you know, make sure that you're safe, first of all. Um, If you're meeting somebody for the first time, it's really, you know, have a plan, take somebody with you. Um, But have that open communication when you're talking with that person that you're talking with. It's having talking and that communication and really getting to know the person. And don't be afraid to ask any questions. Ask the questions, get the answers. So that way you know what you're getting into, so to speak. I think my advice would be, um, let me say this in Swahili. You know how sometimes Wakenya wanazani wazungu wote wakona pesa? Si wote wakona pesa? Ah, you kind of got what I'm saying. Wazungu wote ni masongo. Sio wote. Alafu sio wote wanakuja for the good reasons. There's people who, who will you know reach out to you for the wrong reasons you know when you're on a dating side these people there's crazy people people will send you nude pictures people will send you uh just crazy messages you'll find people who are married who want to have a small fling so you you have to be careful and you have to be sure that this this person you're talking to is legit and is going to travel to the other side of the world and come to meet your parents and you know for me he was the only man who met my parents. I had never taken anyone, any man home to meet my parents. So he's the, he was the first one and the last one. So. Oh, nice. What would you tell your Kenyans and international fans? Fans who cheer for you guys on, when, when we see good relationships on TV. What I would tell them is, first of all, we appreciate all the fans that we have. Without them, we are not relevant, to be honest. Uh, they, they, they are the biggest part of us. They're the biggest part of also our relationship because, you know, everything we do, when we feel, when we feel like filming something, we, we have them in mind. So for that, we're just very grateful. That's the first thing we would say. We're just very thankful that they even take the time to just watch us and be there and comment on our videos if they're watching, you know. Um, so yeah, I would say thank you to our fans. Thank you guys for agreeing to this interview and again, spending your time with me and thank you. <laughs> we are honored to do an interview with you. Thank you for having us. Uh, Santa Sana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was right. He said Karibu. Yeah. Karibu. Ah, good, good. Sana, sana, sana. Yes. Ah, the Karibu sana. Okay. Say hi to your families, and I'm a big fan. Oh, we thank are you. Of the show. Ah, sour. We we're done. Okay. All right. We're going to to go to, to bed. bed. Yes. Have a <laughs> to. Uh, have a good night. Okay. All right. Sour. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Let me just end it.